I think when we hear the word tough, uh, it has this negative connotation to it. When in fact, uh, being tough is not negative at all. Okay. I think we, we have a false sense of what it means to really be tough. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources for those around you that are struggling with life debilitating addictions. We are a Christ-based organization that works with addicts every day. And today we are going to dive right into the topic and we've been really spending a lot of time, Brother A, on the relapse prevention and which is so needed with Vital. everything that's going on in our world and our lives and all those that are around us because right, right. this whole time of the corona and everything, everybody's been going through depression and right. a lot of different aspects of it. And we're seeing a lot of relapses. Well, and I'm, I'm also excited about starting this uh, video podcast. This is our first uh, of uh, hopefully many right. uh, video podcasts. And uh, Derek, when we initially started this, you know, Mission Driven was primarily focused on discussing simply uh, addiction related I issues, particularly right. with this uh, epidemic right. concerning opioids uh, that's uh, out there. Um, but we, we kind of evolved into dealing with this subject of relapse prevention, which is vital. Yes. Uh, you know, both of us, uh, you know, working with the, the organization we're with have experienced loss as a, uh, loss as a result of uh, this opioid epidemic. And so I think it's very important that we, we continue this topic dealing with uh, relapse prevention. Yeah, I, it's so, so very important. And many of you that are watching this or listening to this have experienced this. And this is something that is so vital. I mean, I hate to use, kind of use this phrase, but you can't probably swing a dead cat without probably hitting somebody that has been affected by some type of addiction, life depilating. Uh, not, not, not real familiar with that uh, term, swinging a cat. I mean, yeah, well, poor, cat. poor cat. Poor um, cat. But I, I get what you're what you're saying. You know, uh, just about everyone, uh, certainly everyone I know, has been impacted in some way uh, as a result of addiction. Right. Either it's due to a loved one that's been battling addiction, or it's someone simply they know that they're acquainted with, that they're friends with, has been Im impacted by this. And so uh, we've discussed a number of issues related to relapse prevention. Today, I want to get into talking about tough love. All right. And how that relates to uh, addressing uh, relapse prevention. Right. And, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's important first that we define even what that is. All right. Um, you know, so my perspective on tough love is uh, that it, it, it requires the, the person, the loved one uh, to take responsibility uh, for their their behavior, for their issues, for their addiction. Uh, and I think that's important. Right. Um, and so uh, the, the first thing I would say, though, as it relates to tough love, you can't uh, uh, show tough love to someone uh, that doesn't believe you care. I can completely understand that. That's, that's the first aspect of it. I mean, you know, people don't care what you know unless they know you care, first right. of all. And the second the, the, the second aspect of that is it's it's your responsibility to help them understand and know that you care right that this is all in love right and you're talking about taking responsibility for your actions and everything like that <laughs> just not with alcohol and drugs and addiction a lot of people have a hard time doing that period right especially in our society now right nobody right. wants to take responsibility of something they've done exactly exactly that, that that's a big issue particularly particularly with those who are recovering from uh, addiction because, you know, in, in, in some ways, even through treatment and recovery, we kind of give the person uh, this out where they are not uh, uh, responsible, particularly when we start re referencing uh, addiction as a disease. <laughs> I was just thinking and, the same and, thing. And, you know, my, my argument is, it, my, you know, my goal here is not to argue whether it is or whether it isn't. Right. Uh, but, but what I do identify is the fact that when we focus it so much on uh, being a disease, we remove that responsibility from the individual. Right. And, and I think that that's a, that's problematic. Right. 
it's like the whole thing. I was I was made this way, or I was this. This is how I am. It's, it's I'm. It's just the way I am. It's I take that responsibility off. But we need to learn that you still have a choice, right? And it's your responsibility not to pick up that needle, not to pick up that bottle. It's your responsibility and your choice not to do that. Well, that that's that's true. I agree with that to some degree, uh, Derek. But I do understand that that from an addiction standpoint, having been uh, an addict, right. uh, that, you know, you become so consumed by uh, your addiction that you don't have a sense of control over what you're, what you're doing. You know, even, even in wanting to stop, it becomes a, it becomes a challenge. You even, you know, convince yourself that you won't do it again a lot of times and you end up doing it again because uh, the, the, the addiction has completely consumed your 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 life. Right, it has we, taken over your life. And we talked before in some of the previous podcasts about the different phases or stages of addiction. So that would be um, that stage that we're talking about there, where you can't. You it just happens. Right, is um, it has it's the consuming. Consuming. It thing. has consumed your life. Every aspect of your life is the first thing you think about when you wake up. Last thing you think about when you go to bed. Uh, it's dictating. Uh, everything you do oftentimes right and uh it's not that the addict intended for that to happen matter of fact you know when if we go uh into the stage i talked about initially the recreation stage you know no one no one starts using drugs and alcohol with the goal right. of becoming an alcoholic or addict right uh it, it, it simply happens and you don't know uh when you open that door whether it's going to happen or not that's the that's the danger of opening that door uh the potential of you becoming a full-blown alcoholic or addict right now we're let's get back on to tough love so we talked about taking responsibility what right would be the right next so thing? so let's talk about the tough aspect of it because i think when we hear the word tough uh it has this negative condon connotation to it when in fact uh being tough is not negative at all okay I think we we have a false sense of what it means to really be tough. I'm talking about tough in terms of 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 just being a tough person in terms of what you're working towards a, a, a dealing with in your life, or 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 uh, being tough uh, in the sense of being hard or you know people look at being tough as being hard or 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 uh, negative. Okay. When in fact. Uh, tough being tough can be very positive right can be very positive uh and so when i'm looking at uh, it when i'm when i'm looking at re, you know tough love from a recovery standpoint it's it's the loved one uh demonstrating tough love towards that 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 loved one that's battling addiction uh from the standpoint of not enabling them okay in their in their behavior Right. So kind of being like saying those things that they need to hear and just say, you need to get this cleaned up or I'm not going to support you. You get yourself in the trouble. Right. I'm going to still love you or I'm going to do this right. aspect of it, but I'm not going to help you find the drugs. I'm trying to help you stay off of them, right. but I'm not going to help you go try and find them. I'm not going to drive you to go to see your dealer or whatever you're going to do. That's that's what you're talking about, correct? Right, right. Well, you know, showing showing tough love is as the scripture uh, instructs us to do. Uh, speak the truth in love. Okay. You know, uh, don't don't shy away from what needs to be communicated. A uh, big part of tough love is accountability, holding them accountable accountable for their behavior, for their actions, uh, not uh, rescuing them, refusing. Uh, refusing to be a part of them harming themselves and hurting themselves. See, e either you're going to be a part of the, 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 the problem or you're going to be a part of the solution. Right. And I can't tell you uh, how many parents I've talked to over the years, particularly mothers who were so broken uh, about their son's addiction and, 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 and you know, didn't realize uh, that by not showing tough love that they had actually become a part of the problem rather than a part of the solution. Wow. You know, so, so very true. Because and, they're constantly rescuing them. Right. Uh, you know, you, you know, they, and they learn, the addict learns pretty quickly uh, how to, how to manipulate uh, that whole thing with their right. loved one. 
Uh, and so you got to be able to, first of all, understand and know what tough love is and how to how to how to administer tough love appropriately. Right. So if you are struggling with a life debilitating addiction or you know somebody that is and you need to sh show some tough love and you want to look for some help, give us a call here at um, ATCTN. You can give us a call at 833-462-8286 or you can visit us on the web at atctn.org. And there is a tab right there that says Get Help Now. You just click on that Get Help Now tab and you will be right there where we can fill out a form and we will get back to you within 24 hours. So once again, we really are here to help you get clean and our help the loved ones that are trying to get clean and to be a resource for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's keep going on tough love. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about appropriate ways to show that tough love. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Well, the first way is if they're coming to you uh, and asking for money. Okay. Um, and you are aware of the fact that they're, they're, they're using drugs, they're using alcohol, and the, the, the probability of, of the fact that they're going to use whatever money you give them to go purchase drugs and alcohol, even though they might be uh, saying to you it's for some other purpose, um, y you enable them by giving them that money. I've actually even heard of a, a parent that 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 would communicated that I gave it to them because I didn't want them to go out and do something uh, <laughs> criminal to get the money yeah. to use drugs and 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 that in itself sounds uh, like this individual uh, or this loved one manipulated them yeah. by saying hey if you don't give it to me I'll go do thus and so right it almost goes back to I remember hearing people when, when I was in high school. Yeah, my parents said I can drink in the house as long as I don't go out. Right. I mean, that is not showing tough love. That's enabling them, and you're becoming part of the problem. Absolutely. Well, you are a part of the problem. Yeah, big time. You so. are a part of the problem. And, you know, it's hard for some of those. I get it, you know, where some of these, particularly mothers, mothers are n nurturers. Uh, and I get it where they don't want to see their baby hurting, you know. Right. Uh, they don't want to see their child uh, hurting and they think somehow if they don't help them or do certain things for them or rescue them uh, that that uh, they'll have to deal with the guilt of that if something happens to them and they don't want to deal with that that right. guilt if something happens to them not realizing that you're you're playing a part in something <laughs> possibly happening to them right um, and that you have to stand your ground yeah. Interesting. I use that term. I know that term is used uh, as it relates to certain laws in certain states. But uh, when it comes to uh, an addict, uh, you have to stand your ground. You have to stand your ground and understand that it's not your responsibility if they choose to go out and say rob a convenience store so right. they can get money to use drugs because you didn't give it to them. Right. Well, it's not it's not your responsibility to to enable them them by feeding their drug uh, a habit. Right. You, so you have to stand your ground and say, hey, look, if you choose to go and do that, just understand if you get arrested or, or you get locked up, don't expect me to come and bail you out. Right. I'm going to still love you. I'll still love you. I always love I'll you. I'll come visit you. Yeah. But I'm not going to get you out of it. And that's one of the things, and, <laughs> and you know, uh, I, th I think it's important. I'll talk more about this uh, likely in our next podcast uh, of how my mom showed tough love 27 years ago, okay. which is why I believe I'm sitting here today. All right. Um, uh, a powerful story of, of, of her showing the, uh, what I believe, and some may argue that it wasn't but from my experience her she showed appropriate tough love to me okay uh, that got my attention but what really uh is important about that is that uh i knew she loved me right but it, which is why what she did in in standing her ground right uh was impactful right it was impactful because i knew my mom loved me, well, and it was hurting her to see me uh, go through what I was going through, uh, and it was hurting her. 
Right. Well, it goes back to what we said right at the beginning of the podcast about tough love. You can't take tough love from somebody that you don't know that they love you. Exactly. Exactly. So you knew that your mom loved you, and so you could, she could administer that tough love. Well, it, it, yeah. And, and, and appropriately. It, appropriately. <laughs> appropriately. It, it has to be appropriate. You know, inappropriate tough love comes in the form of uh, ridicule or 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 judge, judgmental you know being judgmental right um uh, that's not what i'm talking about uh, i'm not talking about being judgmental uh you know i'm talking about it, you know love is not going to be judgmental love right. is going to uh uh say what needs to be said and as the scripture says speak the truth in love right so, and that's important uh for us to recognize right well brother a we're right at the end of it this time again but we've kind of led up to it where next time on the podcast or on the video live stream, well, not, not live stream, but when you watch this either on YouTube, Facebook, or you get to catch it on any of the uh, audio catchers, um, we are going to be getting into Brother A's story of his mom showing us, showing Absolutely. him tough love. So I just really want to thank you for being with us. Now remember, if you do have somebody that is struggling with life debilitating addiction, or you are, please give us a call at 833-462-8286. Or you can go visit our website at atctn.org and click on that tab that says Get Help Now. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, and of course this is the first time we're appearing here on the podcast on our YouTube channel, click that subscribe button right below us and ring that bell notification so that you will not miss the next uh, uh, mission driven or any of the other updates that we do here at ATCTN. This has been a production of Adult and Teen Challenge of Memphis and Middle Tennessee. Remember, there is hope through being free from your addictions. Yeah.